seems like just a couple of months ago, I covered the rise of autonomous cars. And one of the biggest criticisms that I got in the comments of that video was that I did a whole video about autonomous cars and I never actually talked about Waymo. And that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a fair point actually, yeah. And I wouldn't be talking about autonomous cars again so soon, except for the fact that last week Tesla did this big investor autonomy day thing where they went deep into their autonomous technology and what all that means for their future. Now, if you follow Tesla, which I know many of you do, then you probably already know most of what they talked about. But if you do want to get caught up, we did talk about that on our, uh, our Ludicrous Future podcast. You can watch it right here. But it all just reiterated to me just how fast this stuff is changing. And it just put some thoughts in my brain head that I thought would be worth sharing here. And I think I earned myself a good I told you so on this one. I'm not above gloating. At Tesla's Autonomous Day event, Elon set some bold timelines and said some big boisterous Elon things. But the main thing that they did was basically try to delineate their autonomous strategy from their competitors. And really it comes down to two fundamental things, data collection and machine learning. Obviously it's way more complicated than just two things, but those are the two things I'm gonna focus on today. Now when I say data collection, I mean, you know, the sensors on the car and how it perceives the environment around it, but also uh, behavioral data, situational data, what to do in certain situations, that kind of thing. And I'll get back to that in a minute, but first I wanna jump into machine learning, which is something I've never really dived into, dived, do, dove, 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 dove into? Anyway, it's something I never really talked about on this channel, but it is something that kind of helps differentiate between the two different strategies here. So machine learning works actually a lot like evolution on steroids. So say the system wants to learn how to tell the difference between a cat and a dog. What it'll do is it'll create a whole bunch of bots and then show those bots and test them with pre-labeled pictures of cats and dogs. Now in the beginning, these bots are really dumb and don't really do any better than random chance, but say one of them does a little bit better than all the rest of them. It'll basically throw all the other ones away, take that one that did the best, create a whole bunch of bots off of that, use it sort of as a template and iterate off of that, and then test them again. And ideally, the test score gets a little bit better. So they take the best of that one, reiterate again, take the best of that one over and over and over again. And this process repeats itself over and over again, millions upon millions of times. And that accuracy each time just gets a little bit better and a little bit better until it gets as close to 100% as possible. And this is how computers are gonna learn how to do self-driving. It's just gonna take all these different little pieces of driving, all these little factors, all these little elements, and just run it through that machine learning grist mill until it figures it out and then moves on to the next problem. And the problems of highway driving have pretty much already been solved. The basics of driving, that's been solved for years now. Keeping the car in the middle of the lane, speeding up, slowing down, avoiding other cars, that kind of thing. What's left are the edge cases, the long tail problems as they call it. All the little, tiny, unpredictable, random things that happen out there on the road that we deal with every single day but don't even think about because it's just internalized with us. This has to go through that machine learning process for every single one of them and there's countless numbers of them. Everything from construction zones to emergency vehicles to bicycles on the road to just a plastic bag floating in front of the car. These self-driving systems need to know how to handle all of those things. In all the companies working on self-driving cars, they've all got these machine learning systems working on this problem. And they've all got really powerful systems and partners that they're working with to make this happen. So really what it all comes down to is the data. You know, who is gonna collect enough data to put into these machine learning systems so that a self-driving car can operate with a reasonable level of success? And this level of success is what they call chasing the nines. You know, it, it's not enough for it to just be 99.9% .9 accurate. It needs to be 99.99999% accurate. And those last four nines might be as difficult to get to as the first 99% put together. So now we're back to data collection. And this is where you really start to see a difference between the strategies of Waymo, Uber, and Tesla. Waymo and Uber already have small fleets of autonomous vehicles out there driving around on the roads in select cities like Phoenix right now. In fact, Waymo recently hit 10 million autonomous miles driven. And these miles are driven by their fleet of 600 vehicles, mostly Chrysler Pacifica vans that have been modified. Although they have made a deal with Chrysler to put 60,000 Pacificas out there uh, modify with the Waymo hardware, but that, as far as I know, has not happened yet. And they are already offering a service called Waymo One, which is just like a, just like Uber. It's a ride-hailing service. You hail a van, and it comes and picks you up and takes you wherever you want to go, as long as it's in Phoenix. It needs to be said though, Waymo's technology really is at the top of the game right now. They are actually doing things that nobody else 
out there is doing. And so they deserve some credit. I mean, when, when Tesla talks about putting robo taxis out on the road, let's just put it out there. Waymo's already doing that. Yes, with limitations, but credit where it's due. Now, Uber is still in the testing phase with their tech, but their approach is similar. They're jumping right into fully autonomous cars and putting them out there and testing them on the roads right now. Now, Tesla's taking a different approach. Instead of jumping right into full autonomy, they're doing sort of an autonomy creep with autopilot updates over the years. So autopilot, when it was first announced several years ago, it wasn't that much different than what, say, Volvo or Cadillac has going on. It's kind of like cruise control on steroids. But over the years, it's grown in capability to the point that now it can handle pretty much all highway driving from on-ramp to off-ramp. And to be fair, their timelines on self-driving have creeped as well. Uh, there was supposed to be a demonstration drive coast to coast at the end of last year that never quite materialized. And now they're saying that the cars will be feature complete for full self-driving by the end of this year with uh, regulatory approval pending. Obviously, they're going to do the ride hailing service uh, in the second half of next year. But even Elon seemed to acknowledge that Elon time needs to be taken into considerations when considering these timelines. Although he has reason to be optimistic for their chances on this, because just like Waymo has this autonomous fleet of self-driving cars out there and they're collecting data and using that for their machine learning processes, Tesla's doing that as well. The difference here is that Waymo's fleet is 600 cars and Tesla's fleet is more than half a million cars. And while Waymo has reached 10 million autonomous miles, Tesla has over a billion miles on autopilot. That is two orders of magnitude more data. It also kind of needs to be said that Teslas are being driven all over the world in all kinds of environments, whereas Waymo is being driven in Phoenix. Now, Waymo's response to this is that they're actually using simulations to sort of train the machine that way. So in those simulations, they're clocking well over a billion miles too. To which Tesla argues that road conditions are far too random and chaotic to ever really fully be uh, put together in simulations so that their data set is going to be more reflective of the real world than Waymo's. The debate on this continues. Add on to all this, Tesla's new full self-driving computer that they revealed last week, which is a redundant neural net architecture that's designed only for autonomous driving. And they might have a shot at this. And while Elon's timeline is characteristically optimistic, and we do need to take that with a grain of salt, I do think that this is going to happen a lot faster than people think. Machine learning was the same process that allowed the computer AlphaGo to beat a champion Go player in 2015. Computers have been beating people at chess for years, but chess has a set number of strategies and moves and stuff like that, whereas Go is much more improvisational. You kind of have to make it up as you go. After that first win, within a year, AlphaGo went undefeated against all the top Go players in the world. And then a year after that, AlphaGo's successor, AlphaGo Zero, beat AlphaGo not once, not twice, but a hundred times in a row. That is the exponential power of machine learning. When these things catch on, they catch on real quick. So I'm just saying, don't be surprised if the self-driving cars thing seems like, oh, it'll never happen. Oh, it'll never happen. Oh, it's here. Now talking about data collection, uh, this actually leads to another thing that differentiates Tesla and Waymo, and that's the sensors that they use. Both use cameras, both use radar, both use uh, ultrasonic sensors, I think. But the big difference here is that Waymo uses LiDAR. And this is what Elon thinks of LiDAR. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. And, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. <laughs> the deal with LiDAR is it's basically radar with light. It shoots lasers out in all directions around the car, creating a 3D point map of the environment around it. And it's really accurate and it works really well, which is why all of the autonomous companies that are working on this technology are using that except Tesla. Tesla has continuously bucked the trend of using LiDAR in their autonomous cars. Here are the reasons why. First of all, it's too expensive. Uh, LiDAR system adds about $10,000 to the cost of the car, which if you're building a fleet of autonomous taxis, might not be that big a deal, but if you're selling it to consumers, adding that extra $10,000 is just a deal breaker. Secondly, it's easily breakable. It works by spinning these mirrors around really fast, which is a lot of moving parts that can wear and tear and break down over time, and any kind of damage to it just renders the entire system un unusable. And thirdly, according to Tesla anyway, uh, it's just not necessary. Tesla's hedging their bets on computer vision, which is sort of a subset of machine learning uh, where it, the computer learns how to pick out images, kind of like the cat and dog analogy that I used earlier. They make the point that the road system is made for human drivers with regular vision. You know, we don't shoot out lasers from our eyes to make a 3D map of the environment. We do with two stereoscopic eyeballs. So they're basically reverse engineering the human visual system using machine learning. Except instead of two cameras, they have eight that see in all directions. So there's that. 
And they also talked in the presentation about how just the same way a computer can learn the difference between a dog and a cat, it can figure out the difference between a person walking normally and a person walking while looking at their phone and being able to understand that a person looking at their phone is going to be paying less attention and you have to be more careful about them. So LiDAR does work and Uber and Waymo are placing their bets on that. Tesla is placing their bets on computer vision. And let's be honest, there is a fourth reason why Tesla doesn't want to use LiDAR. It's because, I mean, look at it. It's also worth mentioning that a paper was just published just very recently that agrees with Elon on the computer vision thing. Titled Pseudo LiDAR from Visual Death Estimation, Bridging the Gap in 3D Object Detection for Autonomous Driving, the paper discusses how stereo cameras can be used to generate a 3D map nearly as accurate as a LiDAR map. So the point of the Cornell paper is instead of a $10,000 LiDAR system, you could have two cameras that cost like five bucks each and get pretty close to the same accuracy. So when the guys at Tesla say that LiDAR is a crutch that's going to be thrown away someday, I mean, they may have a point. As I covered in the previous video on autonomous cars, this is absolutely an egg that's going to be cracked. There's just way too much money going into it and way much, too much money to be made from it for this to not get solved. Will Tesla be the company that does this? I don't know. I can't predict the future. But by the way, there, there's nothing saying that there can't be two different ways of doing this. There might be a, a LiDAR solution that works perfectly well. Solid state LiDAR might come along that might be a little bit less uh, expensive and a little bit less prone to breaking and stuff like that. This isn't necessarily a zero-sum game. But I can say this when it comes to Tesla. You can actually buy one. <laughs> You can't buy a Waymo, you can't purchase an Uber, you can't buy a cruise automation, but you can buy a Tesla, and if autonomous technology ever gets perfected, then you'll be able to take advantage of that. So really, it's not so much that I'm betting on Tesla over these other guys, you know, I'm just betting on the fact that autonomous technology is going to happen, and the only car purchase I can make right now that puts me in a position to take advantage of what could possibly be the biggest transformation in technology and transportation in human history is a Tesla. So that's why I bought one. And if for some reason none of this ever actually does pan out, then I guess I'll just be stuck with a really great car that I love. This really isn't meant to be an advertisement for Tesla. Really, I'm pulling for all of them. It's just I, I can't buy a Waymo. So if I could, maybe things would be different. I don't know. Although I guess if you really want to, you know, bet on Waymo, you can invest in it. That's, that's an option, I guess. So there's this famous story in sports about the four minute mile. It was this barrier that nobody thought anybody could ever cross. It was considered impossible to do. It was the Mount Everest of running. Everybody was trying to do it. Nobody could ever do it. And then in May of 1954, Roger Bannister finally broke through that barrier, clocking in at three minutes, 59.4 seconds. And it was a world record that lasted 45 days. After decades of trying to beat this record, 45 days after Roger Bannister did it, John Landy of Australia did it in 58 seconds and broke his record. And then in August of that same year, the two raced each other and both of them beat the four minute barrier. In fact, within a year, several people had run a sub four and today is considered just a benchmark that any professional runner should be able to do. A similar thing happened in baseball in 1998. Roger Maris had the home run record at 61 home runs. It had stood for 37 years. Nobody had ever been able to beat it. And then in the same year, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa did it at the same time. I mean, they had a little help, but you know, still once one person did it, other people were able to do it. And this happens all the time in sports and business, even in nature. There are, there are multiple examples of convergent evolution where two different species evolve the same traits independent of each other. I think the same could happen with autonomous cars. I think it's gonna be this thing that's almost impossible to achieve and then once one company does it, suddenly everybody's gonna be able to do it. Predicting the future is impossible, of course. You know, Tesla has their timelines, but it's also pending regulatory approval. Lord knows what kind of surprises are gonna come out of that. Also, I think adoption of this technology is not going to be immediate. I mean, especially here in the U.S. We love our cars here in the United States. They're status symbols. They're reflections of who we are. They're a symbol of freedom to a lot of us. So I don't think a lot of people are just going to get rid of their cars immediately. I think it's going to be more of a generational shift. Because the kids being born today, they are going to grow up in a world with autonomous cars. And by the time they become of age, it's going to be a perfectly normal thing. And by the time they have their kids, they're going to wax nostalgically about the days when they were young and their parents used to actually drive the car themselves. 
It'll be like my generation talking about how we grew up not wearing seat belts, sitting in our parents' laps, just running around in the back seat, playing in the back of an open pickup truck, and we'll look at that and be like, how did we survive? Now, there are a lot of people who hear me talk about this and they say, I would never give up my car. And I'm sure that's true. If you're growing up and you're, the norm is to own your car and you're used to that, of course you're not gonna wanna give that up. But future generations will have a different norm. But it's coming, and it's coming soon. And it's gonna be interesting. Now, everything I talked about here was a very surface level uh, look at this topic, but I'm, I'm linking a couple of videos down in the description below. One is from the Tesla Autonomous Day event. Uh, it's very long, but they go into several different aspects of their, uh, their strategy and how they're working it out. The other is a talk on, uh, from MIT from uh, a guy named Drago, I have to look at it, Anguilov. Uh, who is one of the engineers at Waymo. He, he discusses their strategy with the LiDAR and how it all works. And it's, it's definitely worth checking out. It goes deep into all the algorithms and how they work all this stuff out. If you're really into it, um, you'll like it. But I do want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Which system do you think is going to work the best? Would you want to get involved with uh, uh, autonomous car? Would you be a, an early adopter of that? Would you want to wait a while? Um, we all have opinions on this. They're, they're very strong. Share them in the comments. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, uh, Google thinks you might like this one and they know things. So you might want to take a look. Look at any of my other videos if you like that as well. And uh, please do just subscribe if you're into this kind of thing. I talk about uh, technology and future kind of topics every Monday and every Thursday. T-shirts available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. They make great gifts for other people and for yourself. Treat yourself. All right, that'll do it for now. Thanks again for watching. You guys go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.